Thank you very much but, indeed. Indeed, it does bring a lot of things to mind in terms of thinking about knotted particles. So I'm very grateful for that. And I'm going to watch that talk a couple of times, I think, together with the slide <laughs> next to it and, uh, and have a little play with thinking about that. Uh, one thing I'd like to ask, though, uh, uh, at first, you're, you're looking at the gauge connection here, you're looking at a thing in a plane, you're looking at a flat gauge connection. Could you comment on, if you start coming out of the plane, if you start looking into three-dimensional systems instead of two-dimensional systems, does that also introduce another gauge connection, another gauge term in terms of the um, three-dimensional geometrical phase that things have when they move around a, when they move around a loop in three space as opposed to two space? Does that give you an additional yeah, phase? Er, er, everything I was talking about is for knots that are embedded in three-dimensional space. They do not have to be in the plane. Okay, so right, but you don't get, but you should also get an extra phase term as you move around. Imagine you take your knot, take it out of the plane, and then take it out into a bigger and bigger three-dimensional space. So it's going around a loop, which is first of all a line backwards and forwards, and that ends up being a circle. In, in, in three dimensional space. That that also is going to introduce a phase change which could be introduced into the Lagrangian, could it not as an extra phase term between. Uh, Let's see, I, I'm, I'm not sure I understand what you're asking me. Um, the, 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 what, I, what I formulated today is in three dimensional space. Mm -hmm. um, the, the gauge field is defined in terms of three space coordinates and, and all, right? The yes. knot is embedded in three-dimensional space. Um, I did use a principle um, for talking about the topological invariance of, of knots that I would examine them in kind of planar moves on the knots in order to see how they were behaving. Mm -hmm. um, but um, but what that amounts to in this case is that this integral is actually an invariant of frame knots, uh, where uh, where the knot has a, a normal vector field on it, and and then when you're moving the knot, you try to preserve the field as well, and so the the knot the small movements of the knot that you need to think about for isotopy of it. Uh, can be thought of as happening in little planes, and so the argument applied to little planes. But those those little planes can be pointed in all sorts of different directions. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. I I, I see what you're saying. I'm, uh, it's something I'm going to have to have a good think about to see if there is a, or is not an extra. Because when but you, you go, were thinking of some sort of extra space having to do with, I'm, I'm thinking being more in than space. Thinking about yeah, I'm thinking about it, extra phases coming in because you, you you're taking the e to the i theta, taking it down one plus differential when you're looking at a small piece of that being added in. But if you're also changing, if you're not taking everything in a plane, but you're also introducing a rotation where you come out of the plane, also differential rotation out of the plane, if that's happening at the same rate of change as the phase is changing within the gauge, within the gauge uh, field. Then you'll get an extra term of the same order of the, e to, of the first e to the i theta. So you'll have e to the i theta plus e to the j theta, where the j theta is of the same order if it's happening at the same kind of rate. I'll, I'll have to have a think about that because when you're looking at my three dimensional electron. Yeah, let, let, uh, yeah please. Uh, I mean, do, I mean, do, think, do think about it. Remember also that yes. What, yes. I, what I'm doing is, is geometry external to the, to the knot, right? The field yeah. is on space. The yes. knot is in space, uh, yes. thrown into space somehow, yes. and then you measure you measure the holonomy around the knot and yes. get an uh, index of that knot. But if you push the knot a little round a little bit, you change that. Yes. And then Witten's insight was that if he did the right integration, the right averaging of that, uh, he can wash out the the behavior, the changing behavior, and and get a topological invariant. Yeah, it's very beautiful, and thank you for sharing that one with us. It's a very nice, uh, it's a very nice exposition of it as well. I'm looking forward to having a play with that. So I think I think this is uh, I think this I, th I think these these are particle like states. And you, I don't know if you chose the trefoil just for me there. That's very nice. Uh, that was a lovely example you're putting up there. But uh, it's oh, it's, it's, trefoil is the simplest knot. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, 
no, that's um, yeah. No, the, 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 these are the kind of shapes I'm looking at for higher order, higher order particles, indeed. So, uh, oh, another comment that's worth making here is that, of course, this is a kind of um, bomb Aranov gone wild, right? I mean, yes, the bomb Aranov effect is that if you if you are just measuring what happens to a loop or even a global loop in a in the presence of a vector potential then you will be able to pick up a field effect that's right that's right by going around it or if you go around one way you'll you'll, you'll you get a, a phase change from going around the other way yeah that's and, right um that's a macroscopic loop we're talking about so here we're saying all right uh in in the generalized gauge potential what will happen if I go around a macroscopic loop that happens to be knotted? And it turns out you can use that uh, to measure the uh, knottedness of the loop. And, um, and another special case that's worth mentioning that might be in this slideshow somewhere is what happens when um, you are in the electromagnetic case. If you're in the electromagnetic case, what would you expect to come out topologically? Mm -hmm. Oh, linking number, right? Because after all, Maxwell and people back then, uh, Gauss, they figured out that the linking number was really coming from electromagnetism, and indeed it does. There is, if you look at the um, at the at this integral, in the case of two link components. Um, and you're just using the electromagnetic gauge, then you will get the Gauss linking number coming out. Okay, that's, uh, so this generalizes that 19th century work. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Good, right. I was, I was wondering, um, Ed Witten's work has all been on string theory, and I've thought for a while that your John's theory and string theory seem to be somewhat similar with it where you've got these loops that are creating particles. But in the case of string theory, they're saying that your elementary particles are, are like millions of strings, whereas in John's case, it's a single string. I was wondering if there's some way to uh, resolve that difference in the view of these, these loop-like particles. I don't know. Uh, does string theory say that a particle would be millions of strings or, or one I, string I, vibrating in some complex way? Which, which I, I think the main difference with string theory is you start with something which is a fairly complex object. The string is already fairly complex to begin with. Um, so, but, but no, it can be a single string beat as well, or it can be a single membrane. So, but I've so, thought I've seen some YouTube videos where they're, they're showing something like a photon being billions of little vibrating strings. Is that wrong? I, I can't comment on people's analogies of what the stuff is, is 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 showing, and I think that's what that 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 possibly is. But but, but yes, in, in, in it, it, although in my case it's a single single flow. I mean, there are lots of the it, it, it's following a um a series of um of streamlines, so it's a single single streaming flow. But. Um, right. but but from much from a simple base, of course, because we're only talking about space time and root energy in terms of what's going into the theory, not a much more complex system to begin with. Um, so, so, but but the mathematics is very uh, the mathematics is very beautiful. But um, uh, the base of the theory is quite a lot simpler in my case. Mm -hmm. So. Um, there's another difference. I mean, if you're looking at if you're looking at um, a Lagrangian field theory, you tend to think in terms of of one phase um, linking the whole system. And in my case, there are two phases. There's the phase in space and the phase in time, which can. Uh, is that why you were mentioning multiple phases to me a moment ago? Yes, uh, it's uh -huh. part. Of, no, it's not. Uh -huh. it's, no, it's not precisely the same thing. The multiple phases. What what I was thinking of there was more the fact that. Imagine you take a Lagrangian and we look in the Lagrangian, we've got something kx, omega t, omega a, etc. But there'll be yet another term, which is which is which is which is um, which is a phase which is related to the enclosed solid angle, the, the geometric phase. Uh, we'll sit we'll sit in there as well in terms of in terms of a three dimensional loop, which uh, which also produces a rotation. So so if I'm doing this rotation here on the belt, so what you have is ah. 
Right. Every plane in the, in the belt, you still see the twist. You still see a two pi twist, which would be a gauge field as you're going along that, which which is the twist going along the uh, going along the loop. But now, because you've embedded it in three, you rectify that because you have a rotation and another rotation. The rotation is in outside. Well, the plane's a line of those two rotations. So one needs to put an extra phase in to get the rectification. I didn't realize this until I started modeling it. I found I needed to put an extra phase in to do uh, the, um, to, to reproduce the shape of this thing when I did the thing mathematically. I started doing it by parallel transport and I ended up with something which uh, didn't look like the three dimensional object which I'd made. I needed an extra phase in to do that. And that extra, so, um, so, so that was what I was thinking about there. But no, this is an, yet another pair of phases, one phase which is related because if you want to match the phases of everything, so, and this will come in next week's talk, Garnet, this is one for you. We've discovered a talk, Martin talk, on the harmony of phases. It was recorded during the 2018 uh, Vigier talk. And I only discovered it last week, but I'm gonna show it next week. And it will talk about these two different, um, it will talk about the two different phases. The phases, like your diagram, which is now up on Quisicle, It'll talk about how the two phases match one another and how they come out of phase and produce an oscillation, which is at the origin of quantum mechanics. That was the pair of phases I was talking about with Lou just now. This is a different. This, this is an extra rate of change of phase, which is like the aronoff bohm effect, taken exponentiated, if you like, because it's again an exponential term, of course. But it's an extra phase change that you put into the rate of change of phase in the uh, wave function. That comes about because of the geometric phase. So there's a geometric phase which has to do with polynomials, which are in the temporal phase and the temporal phase, which at light speed, of course, are perfectly in phase, but at any other speed, diverge from each other to give you the de Broglie wavelength, which is where de Broglie got the de Broglie wavelength from in the first place. And then that de Broglie wavelength is what you put in, what Schrödinger was putting in lambda is um, h over p is h nu to. Um, deal with the connection that Peter makes between the wave function, between the exponential wave function and the differential, which ties the three parts in Peter's wave function in the Milberton system to one another. So you can stop considering one of them, but they all fit together so beautifully, but, uh, th these things. Anyway, Martin's talk next week is an absolute beauty. So, uh, so and uh, what we'll do is we'll put Martin's talk up on Saturday, on the Saturday slot. So that's gonna give it a rest for a couple of weeks. And uh, Carrie is talking on Sunday at the normal Sunday slot here, so it's a so it's a slightly different time. It's a, it's, it's two hours later on Saturday than this slot, but but there's going to be a Martin talk, and I'll do the Q and A from that. But that that has to do with one of these pairs of phases I'm talking about, which is the spatial and temporal phase. They're normally on they're, they're phase locked in one frame, but in any other frame they can diverge from one another. But that's different from the Aronoff phase, which has to do with an enclosed flux. What's the frame you're talking about? Uh, well, well, the Lorentz frame of reference, the inertial frame in which one one studies that one looks at the thing. So, 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 yeah. So, anyway, I, yeah. Um, so that's something to look out for, Garnet, next uh, week. An another thing I'm curious about in, in your in your context is. Um, see, so you're, you're, you're working with the bell trick there, um, uh, in relation to the way you think of the swing being packed up around in an, in some knotted form. And the interesting thing about the bell trick, um, from my angle is that it's so closely related to, uh, to the algebra. I mean, it isn't just that, uh, that the belt disappears after 720 degrees of rotation. It's that the entire quaternion algebra is really there on the belt for you once you have the belt. You exactly. Know. And, um, yeah. and, and so somehow uh, when you look at that geometric object one way, it's the algebra. And when you look at it another way, it's the, ge it's the geometry and the topology. It's somehow Everything is there in that in that uh, in that peculiar topological gadget of the belt. I think that's right, and I think this is. I was very excited to hear Peter saying that, uh, showing as well, the thing had to be three dimensional. That the spatial part of this had to be three dimensional. I think this is another reason it has to be three dimensional because I think that the three D spaceness of this 
is essential to having that rectification, which then leads to the connections that you have, the multiple 3D spaces embedded in multiple quaternion like spaces embedded in 4D space. But it's between 4D and space which that works so beautifully. And there isn't another way to do that, really. There isn't another pair of spaces which do that so beautifully, which then says something about why space has to be three dimensional. But yes, it, and, and it is all fitted together with the algebra and the way the algebraic and, and the way everything fits together. And I'm sure also it's also to the one plus three or three plus one nature as well. That that's also required because that then gives you the phase connection that you need to get the oscillation at all. So, so I think all of these things fit together. And I think we're collectively, I think we've got our fingers onto this stuff and we're going to, we're going to sort out the hows and the whys of what the geometry and what the, and what the dimensionality and what the algebra all have to do because they were really all talking about the same things. I think that's very beautiful and uh, very excited about it. So, yeah. Anyway, that was a, that was once again, Lou, a tremendous piece of Lego that goes click into into a place here that we needed to have a look at. <laughs> so thanks for the Lego. This is a very nice one. So, but there was one thing that struck me a little bit. You, you were missing out a lot there. I was looking at the number of slides you had there. Was that really three hundred and fifty slides on that thing? Oh, um, there are a lot of slides on on that thing because I've been using it various purposes and um sort of it's organized but you come in, you can come into that slideshow locally and use it for one thing or another i think if we let you loose you could probably talk for 30 hours straight on that couldn't you um yeah you could right <laughs> yeah, sure. are there any other bits that you'd really like to bring in that really should be brought in because you did skip over one or two things i was kind of you were showing a slide i was thinking i was just starting to look at it and suddenly boom it vanished again uh, so oh, where um, you? Well, I'd be, I, first of all, I'd be happy to go back to the show and, and slow down any given transition that you had. Well, I'm going to do that anyway, because I've got this little pause button on my computer. So one or two of the things that are moving, I'm going to stop. But um, yeah, um, okay. But uh, wait, you're going to, are you going to post the slides as well or a, or a subset of the um, slides? I may as well give you the, I could give you the whole show as it is. It's it, That's a show under evolution. I'm using it when I talk to give talks and so there's a lot in there. But um, I could also just clip out the part that starts with quantum field theory and the Jones polynomial and ends with, uh, ends with that summary about uh, quantum gravity. That's probably better Good. Than, than, uh, than overloading you with the entire show. Well, I'd, I'd, pro I'd probably be grateful to see the entire show as well anyway, but uh, but I, I know that sometimes if you're anything like me, there can be one or two slides in there that you'd rather, that are still a little bit uh, speculative, shall we say, you don't necessarily want to make public, but if, if you're going to send that thing, um, that's great. We can put it on Quicycle, um, right. available to Quicycle members. I think uh, I don't think we want to put it up on uh, any, anything more public than that, but uh, put it on the general Quicycle website and people can sure. it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Right, any more for any more? Is it possible to get Ed Witten's uh, feedback on your, your papers, John? We could invite Ed to go. Well, you could, I don't know. Have you ever written Ed Witten about your work? Not specifically. I wait for people to come to me. Maybe it's not the right way to do it. So. Um, <laughs> um, no, I, I think these are, these are kind of. One of the things I want to do in Quicycle is try and unify some of the tribes of physics that have grown up. And I think the string theory tribe is quite a tribe. So um, so uh, it, may, it may not be, I, I keep feeling the right way to do this is not to try to um, go and talk to other people on their ground, but just to do as well as you can on your own ground. I think it's very hard for people who are trained in different fields because the stuff I do or the stuff Lou does or the stuff Peter does, it takes a lot of effort for each one of the three of us really to understand what the other ones are doing. And mm -hmm. it, because Peter's way ahead of uh, anybody in all sorts of areas. And it takes, I, I, I get more out of it every time I hear what he's talking about, for example. And the same goes for Lou. And I can see it's going to be the same for you, Garnet, as well, because uh, it's pretty broad. So it's quite a lot of effort to do that. It's quite a lot of an investment to go in and talk to other people's grounds. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I think you really want to have people coming to you, not going to them. We had Raphael Salkin at Tampa. He's a string theorist. Okay. 
Sorkin. You heard of him, have you? Sorkin, yeah. yeah. He came to Ampa yeah. once. Uh huh. Okay. And gave a talk the and uh, talked to people quite a bit. One, one, one might take a little note of the uh, the general hair color of of, of people who uh, 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 are sort of uh, investigating new things, and I, I I think one of the reasons for that is is simply, you know, youngsters who are in the the, the you know the graduate student PhD, so so the, the uh, a PDF version they're busy trying to carve out a career. And so thinking along different lines is very hard. What happens is a huge attraction to very mainstream stuff. And so I think one of the reasons that's that there are rather a lot of people with gray hair here is, is simply because we're in a position that we can think about things by standing back and, and contemplating and still earn a living, whereas when you're young, I think that's, that's more difficult. So. Yeah, it's also the case, though, that uh, you will see it fairly often that some young person comes up with something really interesting and new and simple idea, uh, and, uh, and then they, of course, will run into all the usual difficulties of getting something like that published, or else not, depending on what it's like. But but because they're young, they, they can come up with something that you would it would startle you that you wouldn't have thought of at all. So, so you, you have to have some faith in the young. No, yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just suggesting it is, it is. It, I think one of the reasons it doesn't seem to happen quite as often as you'd like it to is simply because it's a difficult position to be in, being young and having a new idea and encountering sort of resistance and thinking about, you know, how am I going to make a living. Right. That, 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 in fact, is one of the themes of that old book of leaves of the trouble with physics. So that's what he was saying then, that uh, it's, it was, it's very hard for young people to go into physics without being pulled into the string theory orthodoxy. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're going to counter here. We, if we can get this thing taking off, then the idea here is to welcome people with a very wide range of different and new ideas. And I think we're making it exciting for young people, though we don't see them here today. That's also true. But, uh, I think uh, I think we're uh, doing some of the scarier things first. L Lou, if you'll forgive me saying you, you're not a very scary person in person, but uh, I think it's difficult for people coming outside uh, the field to, um, w without quite a bit of experience, to follow some of the things that we're we're putting up at the moment. I I'm aiming to get some of the younger group members of the group, Innes and 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 Mayank and. Uh, and, and people like that to give talks as well. I think the nice thing about John's theory is it passes Occam's razor. And I think there were some great physicists like uh, Dirac who had a, a strong attraction to simplicity of equations. So it's surprising to get people to uh, at least entertain the, the beauty of John's equations, which are nice and concise, as opposed to the extremely difficult things that are in string theory. Well, thanks for that, Pete. You've got to remember that it's not just got to look beautiful, it's also got to fit the, fit the experiment. <laughs> but if you have the choice. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Both is always nice. Uh, good. Well, we can get. well, this is where mathematicians have the great advantage. It doesn't have to fit anything <laughs> other than it can just be beautiful, which is, <laughs> uh, which is great. You know, that's very lucky. Well, I suppose if, if 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 the theory does get proven wrong, I might uh, try. I'll be a very poor mathematician, I think, but I might have a go at uh, trying to follow some some more advancements. <laughs> if, if it, uh, does anybody think string theory is beautiful? I, th I think. Um, have you ever seen a ball of string? Did you ever go, "Wow, that's beautiful"? <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> I don't, I've never heard it said, have you? Has anyone ever heard the beauty of string theory? I've had trouble finding the string presentations. Let's, let's the 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 string of what the beauty of string topology is for the different particles. For example, just what an electron is or a proton. You know, and the closest I found is I think uh, green implying that a, a proton was billions of, th of strings and then that seemed very hard to accept. And how many string theories are there? Ten to the five hundred, or something like that. 
In fact, you haven't got any chance of being right if there are 10 to the 500. Now, what's the chance of landing on one, the right one, the exact one? Absolutely less than zero. Well, a collection of particles larger than one, actually even a collection of particles equal to one, it's pretty close to zero. There being about 10 to the 80 particles in the universe. Mm -hmm. So forget about it, yes. No, but, but um, there aren't that many string theories yet because there aren't that many string theorists. Oh, yeah, sorry. There's more uh, string theories wrong. available than there are particles. <laughs> You're right. I mean, it is. A I, 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 I guess. I guess they were hoping that they would focus on one manifold that would be the exact right one. Right. It does seem to be uh, going into kind of muddy worlds of string theory thing. It, it used to be more coherent. It's getting less. Of course, less. you realize that since 1984, approximately, um, the mathematicians have known that uh, four-dimensional space has uncountably many different differentiable structures on it. This has been uniformly ignored by the physicists, perhaps for good reason. I, I think the number of the number of possible um, methods you use, which are also unitary, really uh, really ties things down quite a lot. So, um, so so unitary helps a lot. In 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 uh, in, in four D space time, there are only four four that are unitary. So. Um, so, so that helps, but no, that's not true. No, that's not true. Like I've just thought of, I thought of several counter. Sorry, yes, yeah, there could be a loss. <laughs> I just thought of a couple, of, several counter examples. Well, there might be combinatorics of the others. No, I have to think about that one. Okay, yeah. Okay, um, right. Shall we um, go to a quick general discussion? Stop recording this question and answer. Any more questions though on on loose talk before we go? And uh, stay online, everybody. We can have a general discussion briefly, and uh, perhaps we'll record again.